Hello, it's Mandy here. I would like to introduce an idea to you about maths. Now, I realise that maths is a subject which lots of people really dislike, and I want to help people with this by not talking about all the long words and all the complicated stuff at the beginning of the video, but presenting you with a practical example of what it means. So, I want you to imagine this situation. You live in a place which is fairly near to a corner shop, and you want to go to the corner shop. So you set out from your house and you walk along one road for three minutes. And then you turn a corner, like that, and you walk along another road for four minutes. So here's a triangle indicating a map. Right, so you walk along one road for three minutes. There you are, first of all. You walk along one road, one minute, two minutes, three minutes. Then you turn your corner, which is a right angle, which is a corner like a corner of a square or a rectangle. And then you walk along the next road or four minutes so obviously if you go along that route it takes you seven minutes to reach your destination i.e the shop however what you don't know is how long it would take you to go along this other road which runs straight to the shop now that may be silly what sort of situation do you get where you get that sort of triangular arrangement it does happen sometimes but obviously you would always go along that route but there are other situations where you have like a network of roads that you might want to follow along and there are other situations where you might want to work out how far apart two corners of a rectangle are, so you think of the rectangle as a triangle. Now, trigonometry is the study of triangles, which sounds really boring, but you can do something really clever with it. So the question is, how long does it take you to go along here? And the answer is this. First, let's look at this short, short uh, side here. If you look at this short side here, that is, three sorry three units long so I don't know if you can see that but there are three squares on there so that's three units long okay so that's three minutes each one of those squares it takes a minute for you to go down and if you look at this other side then this is going to take you four minutes to travel along so there's your four minutes down there now you may have noticed can you see the squares here? They're gradually coming into view. Okay, that this is in fact a square and not like just a ruler. And the reason for that is this. If instead of imagining that as distances, you try to draw a square on that side, you will end up with a square with three times three, in other words, nine squares on it. And one with nine squares will look like this. So you've got nine squares, that's three times three, which is the square of nine, into a square like that. And that will fit onto that shorter side of the triangle. Similarly, with the long side, you will have your four by four, which four times four is 16, which is the square of nine, along there. So there you go. So that's your four by four. Next bit. How long does it take to go along there? Well, the answer is this. First of all, you've got your four by four, like that. And then you can attach that to, like this. So you've got four by four, you've got another three there. So that's the long side there, like that. I don't know if you can see it, can you see that? It shows you how far it is. And then you square that, and you find that it's like that. And it makes up a 5 by 5 square with 25 squares in it instead of just 5. And then you get the idea of the square root. You've got your 4 by 4, which is the square, the square of 4, is 4 times 4. The square is when you multiply something by itself, and you have 16 squares. Um, and you have this line here, which is 5 by 5, you draw a square. So that's 3 times 3 plus 4 times 4 equals 9 
plus 16, which is 25. So you know that this is 25, and then you take the square root. Now the square root is this. If you take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, the square root of 16 is what the side of the square with 16 smaller squares in it would be. So that's 4 by 4, so the square root of 16 is 4. Now, 16 plus 9 is 25. So, 25, the square root of 25, what is, what times what is 25? That's the square root. The what is the square root. And the what in this case is 4, is 5. So, we know that this line here is going to be 5, and if you walk at a steady pace and it took you 3 minutes to go that way, 4 minutes to go that way, that would take you 7 minutes. It would take you then five minutes to walk along that line there. Now, in a right angled triangle, this is a right angled triangle because it has a corner there, that line there is called the hypotenuse, that's H-Y-P-O-T-E-N-U-S-E, -E. and then you have the opposite and the adjacent of the other two, which can be swapped over, so you can look at those either way. And of course, everything can be divided up into triangles if you try hard enough unless it's got a curved border. So any shape with square sides can be done. Now, why is this useful? Obviously, I've told you about the distance, but also you have the question of how far away things are, how high things are. So if you look at a tree and you point something up at it and you've got an angle, then you will know that the tree has a certain length. The line between the tree and you, your eye, has a certain length. And then you'll know how much, you can work out how much higher than you that looking up is once you know the angle. That's a more complicated thing to do with sines and cosines, but that's how that works. Now this is called Pythagoras' theorem, and it's A squared, call this line, call this side A, call this side B, and call this side C. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which means if you did what I just did, and you cut it up into squares, you get nine squares here, 16 squares here, you'll be able to fit 25 squares in there. So you will know that that's it. Also, this is a very special shape. The three, four, five triangle is a very special right angle triangle because that will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven plus five is 12. So if you have, say, a string with 12 knots in it, you know that you can make a three, four, five triangle if they're spaced apart the same amount. So you've got a string, a piece of string, a loop of string, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, something like that. You'll be always be able to fit it into that shape. So that was my attempt to do a bit of basic trigonometry, that's called Pythagoras' theorem, and you can extend it into three dimensions, because if you think about it, if you have a box, a box has got one line and diagonal line, which you can work out with that, and then you've got a third line stretching from opposite corners of the box, between opposite corners of the box, which would be more, and you will work that out by working out the other two, and so on, and you can just extend that as far as you want, and that is why it's useful because you work out distances, heights, that kind of thing, with what you know. So that's the most, most basic, really, form of trigonometry. There are some more complex forms of trigonometry involving sines, cosines, tangents, and other things, but that's a start, and there'll be more later. I was asked to do something on trigonometry, so I did something on trigonometry, and there it is. So if you like this video, please rate, comment, share, and subscribe. If you dislike it, please tell me why, so I can improve. And I'll see you tomorrow, probably. Okay, bye.